Time now for the morning rush. UNMH will not be paying their leading nurses bonuses this year. Staff was told that UNMH was at a financial loss due to the pandemic and that they will not be giving bonuses as they normally would. However, other emails show that UNMH is offering $10,000 bonuses to nurses like travel nurses who left the hospital more than six months ago. New for you this morning after a late night vote, the State House of Representatives passed a bill aimed at cracking down on predatory lending. Right now, storefront lenders can impose up to 175% interest on small loans, something that Larry Barker looked into. Well, this bill co-sponsored by Taos Representative Susan Herrera would set the cap at 36%. The bill now heads on to the Senate. Families affected by violent crime are now pushing lawmakers to pass a series of crime-fighting proposals. The Albuquerque-based group robbed organized a vigil outside the Roundhouse last night. Families remembered lost loved ones while hoping for change in our crime laws. Another high-profile bill is stalling in a state Senate committee. The proposal would let judges assume certain defendants are dangerous and should be locked up until trial unless the defense can prove otherwise. Backers say that the change would prevent serious crimes, but opponents argue that it would raise constitutional rights concerns. Erica. And here's a look at our school day forecast. It's a cold morning, so bundle up. By this afternoon, we'll be shedding some layers with highs in the mid-50s, some clouds in the area, but a mild day. A bill that would make intimidating an election worker a felony is heading to the House. The Senate recently gave it the green light. The bill would protect election workers, the Secretary of State, municipal clerks, or any other of their employees. Prosecutors are working to keep an accused hit-and-run driver behind bars until his trial. Two months ago, Sergio Almanza allegedly ran a red light outside of the River of Lights, killing 7-year-old Pronoy Batacharia in the crosswalk. Almanza had three passengers at the time, and prosecutors are still looking into whether they could face charges or not. New Mexico's coal mines are set to get cleaned up. The Department of the Interior is going to use nearly $725 million this year to clean up coal mines across the country. More than $2 million of that money will be spent right in New Mexico. The department's plan is expected to take 15 years. Well, the search continues this morning for yet another accused bank robber. Investigators say that a Hispanic man about 5'5", five five, wearing a gray and black jacket, tried to rob the Bank of Albuquerque at Wantabo and Constitution yesterday. If you know anything about this or any other bank robberies, you can call Crime Stoppers at 505-843-STOP. Erica. Here's a look at the threat index. It is low today. We do have cold temperatures this morning. We'll see breezy winds in the Northeast Highlands through the afternoon up to around 30 miles per hour. A man accused of badly injuring two people in a drunk driving crash will be held behind bars until trial. Police say 31-year-old Joseph Thompson crashed into a Buick, badly injuring the passenger, uh, I should say the driver of that Buick, and his passenger. Thompson was taken to the hospital where his blood was found to be more than double the legal limit. He's staying behind bars until trial. While Russia continues conducting patrols near Ukraine with missile-laden fighter jets, a productive meeting took place between the U.S. and Germany. A major sticking point between the two leaders is the Nord Stream 2. That's a more than 750-mile natural gas pipeline being built between Germany and Russia. The city is looking to make the process of destroying historic buildings harder this morning. The Landmark Commission is considering a proposal that would require a review of any property up for demolition if it's more than 60 years old. The ordinance would not allow the city to stop the demolition, but would give them the time to work with the developer on alternatives. Erica. All right, let's get a look at the morning drive. The maps are looking clear, no accidents or slowdowns as of now, and Tracker is headed east on I-40 near 6th Street. Looks like we are seeing higher volumes, no big slowdowns just yet. Gatik is now the first autonomous vehicle company in the world to operate fully self-driving trucks on commercial delivery routes. They're going to be partnering with Walmart across several states as to help ramp up their deliveries and even help solve supply chain issues by only delivering goods from distribution centers to retail stores. Welcome back. On this day in 2009, storms moved through southeast New Mexico, and believe it or not, there was penny to quarter size hail that fell in Eddy, Roosevelt, DeBaca, and Quay County. So, yes, thunderstorms can happen in the winter, enough to even drop hail. There was likely a dry line in the area um, causing those thunderstorms to develop. Well, time now for the five facts. We start with number five here. The city is looking into the process of destroying historic buildings and trying to make it much harder this morning. The Landmark Commission is considering a proposal that would require review of any property up for demolition if it's more than 60 years old. As of right now, only buildings in a few historic areas like Knob Hill are protected. The ordinance would not allow the city to stop the demolition, but would give them the time to see if the building is worth keeping and work with the developer on alternatives. 
At number four, state lawmakers took a moment to remember a Rio Grande High School senior who died during last week's snowstorm. 18-year-old Anibal Guerrero was killed while trying to help a woman who had gotten stuck in on ice. Rather, this was during last week's winter storm. Police say that he was letting air out of the woman's tires when another driver lost control and struck him. Anibal's principal says that he was a great soccer player and was on his way to graduate. And at number three, it is going to be a warmer day across the state. The warming trend begins. We'll be seeing highs in the 40s for the upper Rio Grande Valley, 50s for all low terrain spots like Farmington, Albuquerque at 54, the lower Rio Grande Valley, mid to upper 50s. And on the east side of the state, we'll be in the mid 50s in the northeast highlands, otherwise 60s for the east and southeast plains. At number two, prosecutors are working to keep an accused hit and run driver behind bars until his trial. It's been two months since Sergio Almanza allegedly ran a red light outside of the River of Lights, killing seven year old Pranoy Batacharia in the crosswalk. Now, investigators say that Almanza took off and hid the ATV that he was driving at a friend's house. Almanza had three passengers at the time with him, and prosecutors are now looking into whether or not they could face charges. The DA's office says that Almanza bolted for Mexico as soon as he was named as the suspect. He was then picked up last week, crossing back into the U.S. Number one, now UNMH will not be paying their leading nurses bonuses this year, despite the extreme demand for nurses during the pandemic. Hundreds of local nurses are saying the news of no bonuses feels like a slap across the face. And they are being punished for being loyal. UNMH administrators told staff that UNMH is at a, quote, financial loss due to the pandemic. Because of that, they will not be giving hundreds of people in hospital leadership, including many nurses, their bonuses as they normally would. Other emails, though, show UNMH is offering $10,000 bonuses for nurses who've traveled, uh, who left the hospital more than six months ago. UNMH tells us the return 